Well, we knew this day was coming at the Idaho State House. Democratic Senator James Rukti even said as much in today's Senate State Affairs Committee meeting. Someone is going to come forward with a bill to remove two of the three of the exceptions in Idaho's recently passed abortion bans. The heartbeat, six week, $20,000 or five years in prison restrictions apparently weren't restrictive enough for some Idaho lawmakers. But when first year state Republican Senator Scott Herndon out of Sagal stood up today to introduce RS-29974, which would remove the exceptions, exceptions that is, of rape or incest from Idaho's abortion laws. As Rukti put it, it, it was shocking for him to see those exceptions stricken in the statute. Even if it was just a proposal today, Senator Herndon introduced his RS, wrapped his idea, I should say, with the purpose of offering equal protection under the law to all, including those in utero. It's kind of auspicious that today is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday and his purpose was and he spent 13 years advancing the civil rights of people based on certain characteristics. And this does the same thing. It seeks to advance civil rights based on certain characteristics. Right now, we do not have equal protection in the law based on the alleged circumstances of conception. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there with this 20-second soundbite. And we'll get to the claim that abortion bans are based on the foundation of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s teachings. We'll get to that in a moment. But the alleged circumstances of conception, like rape or incest, which are violent crimes, Senator Melissa Wintrow, who has spent years working with rape survivors, was quick to point out they just received this RS in committee, and with little time to digest it, she asked one question. So let me be clear, what you're saying then is there are no exceptions. Let's say a 13-year-old girl was raped by an uncle, a father, a brother, and uh, that we would force that 13-year-old to carry a pregnancy and have a child uh, and not get an abortion. Is that what I'm hearing? Senator Herndon went with the semantics argument, saying the state of Idaho isn't forcing anyone to do anything. So presently, all we're doing with the legislation is that we are banning abortions in the case where a person alleges that they that the child was conceived in rape or incest. The state of Idaho has nothing to do with forcing pregnancy, forcing crimes, forcing alleged crimes or forcing anybody to carry a child at all. These are merely natural circumstances. The state of Idaho does not control that. So a woman getting pregnant from an alleged rape or incest, says Senator Herndon, is merely a natural circumstance of someone committing a crime. According to the senator, the removal of these exceptions, Idaho isn't forcing anything on anyone, just removing any choice her or her family might have in the matter. Then Senator Herndon offered another perspective on Senator Wintrow's 13-year-old rape incest survivor scenario. Some people could describe the situation that you're talking about as the opportunity to have a child in those terrible circumstances if the rape actually occurred. He said, yeah, to some people, a 13-year-old carrying a child to term is an opportunity in the terrible situation described. And that would be their choice that I assume they would make as a family. Well, the chair of the Senate State Affairs Committee, Senator Jim Guthrie, then asked Senator Herndon if an alleged rape or incest turns into a conviction of rape or incest, would that abortion still be illegal? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> if I could offer some clarity on that, though, I believe the reason that we have the, the alleged rape or incest claim is because, of course, you wouldn't have enough time to get an abortion before you could go through the court process and get a conviction for rape or incest. Which is, of course, what we already knew, given the situation. I asked Senator Herndon for some clarification on not forcing anybody to carry a child if you're removing the options for victims of a crime. He basically said the state of Idaho had nothing to do with how a woman or child would get pregnant through rape or through incest or otherwise. But the state of Idaho does have a compelling interest in protecting innocent preborn children from having the brute force of an abortion imposed on them, he said. So back to that part about introducing the RS on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Senator Herndon called it auspicious, which is meaning conducive to success, but however, this wasn't. The committee returned his RS to him with only one vote to keep it alive, meaning the routing slip won't get printed as a bill and won't get a hearing either. So it's dead, essentially, which at the State House is merely a natural circumstance.